The shuttle we just saw land carried two kinds of payloads, one funded entirely by private industry, and the other related to our national security sponsored by the Air Force. This versatility of the Columbia and her sister ships will serve the American people well. Yet we must never forget that the benefits we receive are due to our country's commitment made a decade ago to remain the world leader in space technology. <laughs> to ensure that the American people keep reaping the benefits of space and to provide a general direction for our future efforts, I recently approved a national space policy statement which is being released today. Our goals for space are ambitious yet achievable. They include continued space activity for economic and scientific benefits, expanding private investment and involvement in space-related activities, promoting international uses of space, cooperating with other nations to maintain the freedom of space for all activities that enhance the security and welfare of mankind, strengthening our own security by exploring new methods of using space as a means of maintaining the peace. There are those who thought the closing of the Western frontier marked an end to America's greatest period of vitality. Yet we're crossing new frontiers every day. The high technology now being developed, much of it by byproduct of the space effort, offers us and future generations of Americans opportunities never dreamed of a few years ago. Today, we celebrate American independence, confident that the limits of our freedom and prosperity have again been expanded by meeting the challenge of the frontier. We also honor two pathfinders. They reaffirm to all of us that as long as there are frontiers to be explored and conquered, Americans will lead the way. They and the other astronauts have shown the world that Americans still have the know-how and Americans still have the true grit that tackled a savage wilderness. Charles Lindbergh once said that short-term survival may depend on the knowledge of nuclear physicists and the performance of supersonic aircraft, but long-term survival depends alone on the character of man. That, too, is our challenge. Hank and TK, we're proud of you. We need not fear for the future of our nation as long as we've got men like you to serve as our inspiration. Thank you both, and God bless you for what you're doing. Before I introduce you, if you'll all just look, well, I'm sure down in front, maybe you can't see, but way out there on the end of the runway, the Space Shuttle Challenger, affixed atop a 747, is about to start on the first leg of a journey that will eventually put it into space in November. It's headed for Florida now, and I believe they're ready to take off. Challenger, you are free to take off now. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you two sons of Auburn, Captain T.K. Mattingly and Colonel Hank Hartsfield. Thank you. Mr. President, you, uh, you mentioned something about people having a desire to maintain a presence in space. Not very many hours ago, I know two guys who really wanted to maintain that presence in space a while longer. <laughs> that is, uh, you never get tired of it. The most remarkable thing, besides the machine and the team that put it together, is that it's a new discovery every minute and every day. The machine we built is a first stepping stone here comes the second one. We're standing in front of its pathfinder, and there's more to come. 
Where we're going to go in the future is something that depends on you. our second step I'd like to thank you for being here today it's really a privilege for us to be part of this celebration I don't feel like it isn't our celebration at all we were just lucky enough to be here the people that make all this work are the thousands of designers and engineers that made it work and as the president pointed out all the technology in the world is just a tool and the only thing that makes a difference between our technology and the trip that we've just had and the sights that we've seen and the things that we've thought and the ideas that that spurred, all the difference between that and just plain old technology is the people that made it happen. And the country is blessed with having a team that's dedicated to the United States and to the exploration and the exploitation of space. And I am just as proud as I can be to be a part of that NASA team. There's one other thing that I'd like to say, and I'll let Hank talk to you. Hank's had to endure me for a long time now. And he probably thinks that this last year has been the longest year of his life. And it certainly had more hours packed into it than most. But throughout it all, this guy has maintained a sense of humor and an industry that's second to none. And this is the finest pilot that ever flew in a spacecraft. Hank. It's kind of tough to follow that. I can only echo the words of the president and TK. I'm very proud to be here and be a part of uh, the shuttle program. I think back to 206 years ago when our forefathers ushered in a new era of true democracy for the world. And here today, I think we have ushered in a new era also a fully operational space transportation system. We've got a real fine vehicle there. That vehicle performed far beyond my expectations. And I think TK and I brought all you folks about the best spacecraft that's ever been built. It will be tough for Challenger and the ones coming down the line to top it. But as Ken said, the people that put all this together are the important part. TK and I are only just a little tip of the pyramid, and we're standing on the top of a huge number of people who have dedicated their lives and their efforts to making it all work. It can't be done without you folks. And I'm convinced, as TK is, that American technology is the greatest in the world because we have the best people in the world, people who are willing to work. I think that the future is going to hold something for us that at this point we cannot e even imagine. In the short time that I was there in space, I thought of some things that could only be done there. And when we start sending people up routinely, as the president pointed out, we just open the railroad. TK referred to it once as opening up the freeway. Once they're built, we know no bounds to what we can do. And I am very, very proud to be a part of this initial effort. Thank you.